Good day, everyone, and welcome to FERD TV. I'm Ray, and I'm glad you're here today. We have a little project. That project is, I'm going to make up two water pumps, one for fresh water. You can tell it says fresh water right on it, upside down. You have to be able to read upside down. And then one is going to be for gray and black, and that's going to be for pumping our water from our fifth wheel uh, tanks over to uh, bladders on the uh, on roadie. So this is not my invention. I got this idea from watching uh, David on Big Truck, Big Travels and Jim and Kelly over on Sweet Travels. Now Jim got the idea from David over on, on uh, Big Truck, Big Travels. So you might want to watch either one of those and David does have a full list of everything. I don't know if I'm going to get a full list together for you, but I am going to give you an idea of what you need uh, to do this. So one of the first things that you'll need is a, a container or a waterproof box. I've gone with the Apache 2800 and I picked that up over at Haba Freight. And that was a suggestion from Jim over at Sweet Travels. Now it is a different box than what um, David was using on uh, Big Truck, Big Travels. The uh, pump that I'm going with is, and I, I imagine you could use just about any pump, but I went with the uh, Seaflow Series 4200. Um, yeah, you know, I'm gonna give it a whirl. Seems to be a good unit, had good reviews. Some of the other things that you will need are this is going to be our electrical connection setup that's going to be attached to the box. And I'll show you all of this. I'm going to do it quickly and show you how we did it, or I did it. And that's what that is. These are quarter by inch and a quarter fenders. They're all stainless steel. These are just little number eight uh, flat washers. You're going to need some uh, eight by one inch screws. Then. You're going to need these, and this, is, was, this was a little confusing to me, and I did get a little messed up with uh, trying to figure it out watching the, uh, the videos, but you're going to need two of these, okay, and these are this right here, and then you're going to need two three-quarter by uh, half-inch bobbed, so three-quarter pipe half inch bob, I believe that's three quarter, it might be half inch, I could be making a mistake there, that might be half inch pipe and half inch uh, bobbed, I'm not 100% sure on that, I just picked it up at the uh, local store. You need uh, two of them and two of these and then one of these will go through, this is a uh, GHT, so a garden hose uh, fitting and then for the other one you're going to need this connector which is garden hose female female and it'll go on like so, tighten down, and then you'll have your two different connections so you won't get messed up with your hoses when they, you know, when you're connecting. You're gonna need a box of uh, these right here, which is two um, bobbed fittings to attach to the pump, and it comes with some Teflon tape. You don't have to have this, but I went with um, this plug which, here we go, which this plug is going to uh, seal off this. And then I went with a cap, which is this. And then I can seal off this end. And that way there, no dust and dirt will get in them when I'm not using them. Let's go on down the line here and see what else we have. Well, you're gonna need, um, four of these and they are um, half to three quarters is the size of those if I remember correctly. I'm putting an on off switch in there just like uh, both of the other two guys that I mentioned did. That's what this is. I bought, I, actually I bought double of everything I'm showing you because we're doing two boxes, right? You are going to need a connection cable. So I bought a six footer which has your connections at each end, which you'll plug into this guy, right? So this will get mounted to the box, and then this will be mounted to the, um, or plug into that box. And I'm also putting another setup on my uh, truck 
and all I have to do is just plug it in. I did buy a set of, uh, or a box, an assortment box of, of these. You don't have to do that. You just need the uh, eight by uh, one inch screws. And I bought a roll of our uh, half inch inside uh, diameter by three quarter outside uh, for water braided uh, hose. And this I didn't purchase, but it's my cutter for doing PEX tubing. And it cuts that real well, I tested it. So I think that's all we need for, for uh, materials. For tools, we're going to need a set of step bits and a set of regular drill bits. And one of the other things that I'm doing, and I'm gonna show you that in a minute, but I'm using a long drill bit. <laughs> I don't know if it's even in, in frame now. Let's see, yeah, it's a long eighth inch drill bit. Now I know everybody's not gonna have one of them. I'm gonna use it right here because what I did was I figured out where this pump is gonna go inside the box when it's open. This is the bottom of the box. Now I can just drill my 1 8 inch holes through there with that, then flip it over and do all my connections. So that is that. So let's get uh, doing one of these. I'll just show you one uh, quickly, and then uh, you, know, you duplicate if you're doing two boxes. So the first thing I did, like I said, was I figured out where this pump is going to go inside of the box. Then I turned it over. It's pretty easy to... Uh, to figure out where it goes out here. I mean, you don't want this head too far this way. It's gonna hit the front of the box and probably move it back just a little bit just to give myself a little bit more clearance. Should be just fine. And now I'm gonna just drill down through. And, and the way it worked out, this pump fits in perfectly in between these ridges. So with this longer bit, I, I won't hit anything. Okay, now we can see if that was a success. I'm turning it over and opening it up. And there's our holes. Now our number eight screws are going in there and I don't think the hole is gonna be big enough. No, so we're gonna open it up with probably a 3 16 bit. So we'll just do a little test. Yeah, that's good. It'll probably go just a little bit smaller. You can always open the hole up a little bigger. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we're gonna go with an 11 64th drill bit. Open these holes right up. Well, actually I can do this. Seems to be a pretty decent box. We'll see, time will tell. So we're gonna use these flat washers, or the fender washers on the outside here. Oh, you know, I just noticed something. These are going to hit right there. So I might end up just flattening one side on them. I think I will. Okay, I cut the ends one side on. I did them four at the same time. I'm not telling you to do this. I would say get a smaller washer. I use these because I had them here. And because I had them here, I'm utilizing them. Now we're going to get the pump in here. Once you get them started in here, it's not going to be a big deal. It's like a rubber mount. So it's a rubber mount on the pump. And so once you get these started in the hole, they just kind of thread themselves right up inside there. Okay, I got one started now. That's going to make life a lot easier. I'm going to get a wrench on that and tighten them up. All right, looks like a nine millimeter will do it. So we get a wrench on there. Good. Okay, you can see they're all in there and, and tightened up. I would say we want to get our fittings on here. You know, I don't know why you actually need tape on there, but we'll put a little Teflon tape. Would have been a good idea to probably do this before I went in here. So keep that in mind. You might want to wrap your tape on before you go in here. It's not the end of the world, but it would be easier. Again, I don't know that you actually need Teflon tape there. 
because it's a seat that goes in. I strongly suggest you do this before you put it in. It's a lot easier. But I'm not taking the pump out to do it. We don't need to. But it would be a lot easier for you if you did it beforehand. So the other thing that I didn't mention to you is these boxes come through with all of this packing. You just take it all out. All the foam comes out. You don't need it. Boom. Okay. So then the next thing that we're going to do, that's gonna go right there. We're gonna drill for our fittings here. I don't think it really matters where you put this because this is gonna be a flexible tubing. It'd be a matter of making sure that you got a good place to mount this. So I would say anywhere in that vicinity would be fine. Not there yet, but we're getting close. Okay. How's that? Boy, that is really close. Let's come back the other way and see what happens. We're close. I'm not used to step bits. I usually use a hole saw. I might have wanted to do that, but it's gonna work. Just gotta go in one more, just a little deeper. Boy, that is it right there. You know, another thing you might wanna do is drill these holes before you put the pump in. So you're learning something here. That's it. That's our guy. Okay, see that's gonna work fine. So now we're gonna duplicate that over here. That might be it right there. I think it is. I just gotta clean the bottom of that hole a little bit. You always learn on the first one. kind of why you watch people and then you don't duplicate their mistakes okay there we go perfect this actually will be going in this way so I think we're gonna get this all set up with uh, tape and everything before we go in okay I tightened these up I used an adjustable wrench and just tighten them up and you didn't even have to hold them on the inside they they stayed then I figured that we needed eight and a half inch uh, pipes or braided hoses. I put my uh, clamps on first. It's a six millimeter on these particular clamps anyway. Uh, depending on what you use, yours might be different. So I'll take the things I'm learning here and I'll make the next pump go easier. So the last thing to do is put in the switch. And then we should be in good shape. It's gonna come in here and go out there, which I struggled a little bit with that. I'm trying to figure out which thing I need here, but the inlet would be this. And then this is a cover for it. And then this stays just like that as the outlet. And this is a cover for it. All right, let's put the switch in and we'll call the first one done. We need to drill two more holes. We're putting the switch over here. Electrical connection is gonna go over here and that's actually a smaller hole. Let's get that switch in. All right, that's gonna be good. That's that. Okay, I don't know if that needs to be adjusted, but we'll move it if it needs to be. All right, let's see where we are now. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. So I think we're gonna want the cap up in the air like that, so that when it's on, it's laying down. Boom. So we need to put a couple of screws in there. All right, if we get the first screw in right, everything else will go rather easy. It's 
comic, quite the little box. Those guys had a great idea. Again, wasn't my idea. I just thought it was a good idea. And I'm going forward with it. I've made all of my wire connections, but before I go over any of that with you, and I will, I'll tell you what went where, I'm going to go down and do a test on this and make sure that she pumps water and it's correct. One thing I am noticing is I want to use my old connection for this, not the one that I'm going to use in the future um, because I'm not ready to hook that up yet. But my old one that I use, well, it's not really old, but it's my original one for my flow jet. Uh, if you notice, the negative is on the top and the positive is on the bottom. And when you look in here, they're just the opposite. So with this connection, I got to reverse these. All right, let's go down and do a test, and hopefully it's a success, and then I'll tell you how I hooked them up. We're all set up for our test. I got a little bit of water, got a hose. I've got my inlet right there, and I've plugged in my cable. Now I got to reverse these. So the negative is going to be positive. I'm positive. Positive is going to be negative. this and that's the positive so let's see what's going to happen here oops so pissa <laughs> and the light is on and then off well, that's perfect. So now we'll go back up there and I'll show you how I made the connections. I wasn't 100% sure they were correct, so I didn't want to mislead you. All right, let's uh, wrap this up up in the shop. Well, that test couldn't have gone any better. I'm thrilled. I just got to heat up my heat shrink now and, and bring that down. But what I wanted to do is just show you the hookup here. So the hookup is the positive coming in goes to the black wire on this switch which happens to be uh, at one end or the other of the terminals. Then the red wire which is the one in the center, that red wire connects to the positive wire on the pump. Uh, the um, yellow wire which happens to be at the other end of the switch. Well, you know what I can show you that right here. So this is what I'm talking about. Um, this is what you're looking at inside there. So the black wire is at one end, the red wire is in the center, and the yellow wire is at the opposite end. The yellow wire actually connects to the neutral wire, or the ground wire, I should say, on the pump and coming into the unit from the uh, electrical. And that's it. It's a pretty simple hookup. Um, I wanted to make sure that I told you about that because a lot of the guys aren't showing you or telling you exactly how they're hooking it up and I had to kind of limp my way through it. So if that helps you a little bit. So see you got your black wire from the pump, which I connected with the yellow wire going over here to the switch, and then the, uh, the black wire coming in, the ground wire coming in from, from the battery sauce. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, that's going to wrap up this little... Uh, Short little video. I'm going to keep it short and because uh, people just don't have a lot of stick to as they used to. And uh, if you made it all the way to the end, you have stick to -itiveness. It's a good time to go give it the old up yours if you got enough mustard left in you. Don't do it for me. Do it for YouTube. They love that sort of thing. They have people counting night and day, day and night. Don't disappoint them. And it's about time that you might think about subscribing. You know, it's been a little while. I got quite a few videos out. Maybe you're seeing something that you're getting a little something out of. And as a bonus, it's now sugar-free. All content sugar-free and cholesterol-free. There's no more excuses. Push that subscribe button. I'd love it. I will see you on the next one.